I'm Bill Cox, Castlemont Farm, Powhatan, Virginia. One half of the equation. <laughs> Miss India, stand up, please. Here's three quarters of the equation. <laughs> we are a small, sustainable, organic farm in Powhatan. We sell everything direct to our buyers. You're going to hear wholesale in a few minutes, but we are totally direct to three different groups. Consumers at farmers markets, high-end chefs, and to some folks who make alcohol. Okay. I'm in charge of the alcohol division. <laughs> we are not advancing, so, okay. 2010. I was sitting exactly where y'all are. And we were listening to Dr. Raffi and Michael Clark. And we've listened to them every year since, and every year since we've learned something. So they are tremendous resources for you. You're growing ginger in a temperate climate. It's a tropical plant. Your resource in the U.S. is Dr. Razor Rathi. He's been to Vietnam and Miramar in the past 18 months. He's traveling the world, and we are fortunate to have him at your fingertips. So if you decide to go forward with this, or if you have gone forward with this, Dr. Rathi is just an incredible resource. Making ginger a successful crop really depends on how well you manage three different things. Seed and disease, your growing protocol, and marketing. Now I'm going to talk about what we do and what we've been doing for the past seven years. And you're going to hear some different approaches from Richard and Michael. That just tells you you have more options than you might believe. Ginger seed sources, there haven't been many. Puna Organics, which is Hawaii clean seed, uh, has been one of the principal ones. We've used them a fair amount. Now there's a young man uh, in North Carolina, right out of Silk Hope, which is very close to Chapel Hill, who started this year with Chinese white that he got out of the Hawaiian clean seed project. He's grown about 2,000 pounds of seed and he has still about 1,200 pounds available. So we're beginning to see this void for seed begin to fill and provide you with more options. This has been one of the real choke points in terms of being able to expand ginger production in the U.S. Dr. Raffi's already talked about grocery and wholesale. Uh, that's a roll, from our standpoint, that's a roll of dice uh, on disease and not a place that we're willing to go. Growing has really kind of three pieces, the pre-spout, transplant, uh, and feeding. And so we'll kind of go through what we've done in each of those areas. For us, the growing is all keyed off of this date right here. Somewhere in the middle of May, we can take our transplants and we can move them across our high tunnel. We can spread them out, really begin to grow them. Middle of May is because that's when the temperatures are going to be such, the nighttime temperatures, that this plant is going to prosper. It really doesn't like to be under 60 degrees. Uh, and so that's when we, we think we can get it out. So that's where we start when we start thinking about how we're going to, to plant. And so we're starting ginger around 315. That's later than when Dr. Raffi's doing it. The reason is, he's using a one gallon pot. That takes a lot of space. And when you're starting it at 315, you've got to provide supplemental heat. And so we started in a smaller pot, a three quarter liter pot. If I start that in January, which we could, to plant in mid-May, it's going to be extremely root bound. That will, that will slow down the production of ginger. So I'm looking at my container 
and when I start it. I'm going to start turmeric a month earlier. We normally see our first sprouting of ginger uh, as it comes out of dormancy somewhere around 30 days. It's been as early as uh, 24 and as late as 34 for the first sprout to start. And in a month, they're all pretty well up and out of the ground. Turmeric starts at 60 days. And so we'll just start it sooner. But every year, we go out and we look at it and wonder if it's still alive. Every year. And eventually it decides it's alive. Um, Pretty sprout. We've done it a lot of different ways. The first year, we started these little guys, 1024 trays in our basement, under a cover with a little bit of heat. And then we moved it out to our nice, shiny, brand new high tunnel. Um, and we kept them under plastic with a little bit of heat until it was time to transplant. That worked. Next year, we decided to build a tunnel within a tunnel because we had a little bit more that we wanted to grow. And we grew them in trays again. That yeah, worked okay. And then the next year, we grew them in pots inside the tunnel, inside the tunnel. And then the next year, we decided we would go to our uh, coolers. We have three walk-in coolers. That's well-insulated, unused space in February and March. Every farm hates empty space. You've got to fill it up with something. So we did. So we, put, we built trays and we put it in there and we grew it in trays. So we found out that that didn't make us as happy as we wanted to, so we put it in pots. That worked okay. So then the next year, we decided to build, which was this past year, we decided to convert one of our high tunnels to a greenhouse and we would grow it in there and we would grow it in pots. And so that's what we did. So the point of this is we've tried it a lot of different ways. If you want to grow ginger, there's a way for you to do it. It's a way for you to get started. You just have to look around at the facilities that you have. All of them work, all of them have pluses, all of them have minuses, and I'm not real sure what it's going to look like next year. We'll we continue to grow ginger. You put in the cooler bill that you no, we lived in the, we, 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 we kept them in the cooler uh, until they started to sprout. Now what we found was on the warm part of the day, we could open up those cooler doors and they would get enough sunlight so that they would turn green and continue to grow. I wasn't happy with that. That had some downsides to it. Uh, see it beginning to bump up against the top? <clears throat> pale so that's why we decided that was almost working but we needed to move to something better which which was the green ants.